Here's a conservation of energy in a work due to friction problem that involves several interesting elements here. So there's a block that's at height h not above the ground, and what happens is the block will uh, be pushed up against a spring here. So it's a spring here that's all coiled up, and if the spring was in the equilibrium position, it might be all stretched out like this. And so, once again, what we know about these compressed springs here is that when you displace them from their equilibrium position here by a distance delta s like that, they store energy. So that's what happens. The block's at the top of the hill, you push it back against the spring, and it stores potential energy. Then suddenly the spring is let go, of course, and the blocks can start going this way with some kinetic energy. It's going to go down this hill. Remember, this, it was a height h not above the ground. It's going to go down the hill onto this flat section right here. Then it hits this joint right here and starts going up an incline, but the incline is rough. There's a coefficient of friction here. It's all nice and rough in here. What the problem is like to know is that what we'll eventually see when the problem's over is we're going to see a block here, the same block that stopped up here, but it sort of traveled up the frictional surface by a distance delta d. We'd like to know, well, what was that delta d going to be? Okay, so the way I set this problem up here is I'd say E initial is equal to E final plus the work due to friction. So the reason why I'm putting my work due to friction in there is because what I see is happening is the following. The system definitely has some initial energy. In fact, this is the initial case over here. There's the initial configuration of the system up there. And when it gets over here, it has some final configuration of energy. And so those are my initial and final. But what I know is going to happen is when that block drags over the friction, the rough surface right here, it's going to heat this surface up. So I'll draw it in red like this because the surface is going to be nice and hot. And this red surface here is exactly my work due to friction right there. That's the work that friction did in making that surface nice and hot like that. And so, well, let's just fill some stuff in and see what happens here. So the initial energies I see of the system here is, remember, the block is a distance h naught above the ground, so I put an mg times h naught in there. And also it's against this compressed spring, which has a compression of 1 half k times delta s squared. So those are the initial mechanical energies I see in the system here. So then it slides down and slides down. I can certainly find the kinetic energy here, 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 any point in between if I want. But I'll just stick to sort of what the problem wants, which, which is this how far it slid up the incline right here. So these are the initial mechanical energies up here, and all that's going to go into some final energy. And so the final mechanical energy here is when this box is sitting here at the very top, I'll just say that it achieves, achieves some new vertical height h1. So I'll say it reached some height of mg times h1. Okay, there it is sitting up there. And additionally, now I have this work due to friction here, which is going to be the frictional force times the delta d. So that's a work due to friction. So once again, just rehash the equation initial potential, compressed spring energy, so initial gravitational potential, initial spring potential, all goes into final gravitational energy, plus the work due to friction, because I see this hot surface right here. So the frictional force, of course, is the mu times the normal force. Now, be please be careful on a problem like this, because the normal force is not just mg, because the block is on an incline here when it slides up this incline here, but it's going to be mg times the cosine of alpha. That's the normal force for a block on an incline. So if we fill all this stuff in here, what I'll get now is I'll get an mg times h naught. There's that initial potential energy, plus one half k delta s squared. There's the spring energy, plus mg times h one. There's the final potential energy. Then I have the work done due to friction, which is mu times mg times the cosine of alpha. This is the frictional force. And remember, but it's not just force. Now I need the times delta d in there to make it complete and to work. So here you go. Here's your full conservation of energy equation that you'd need for this. Run through it one more time. Initial potential of the block, initial spring potential, final potential energy of the block, and this term right here, this last weird one right here, this is all the work due to friction. This is the amount of energy that was lost by the block when it came over here and dragged over this rough surface and heated it up. So I have to account for that. And just remember, normal force is not mg because it's on an incline. And that should do it for us. So you should be able to adapt this equation to whatever your particular problem is asking for.